happens to you on days like this, where you just can't get out of bed, where you're overwhelmed, you're tired, you're fearful, you're afraid. You don't know if you're doing enough, but you feel like you're doing too much. These are basically the days that I go through. And on this day, it was the biggest struggle for me. I couldn't get up out of bed. It was a whole entire Monday. Who doesn't get up out of bed on a Monday? I'm that person. I struggle with generalized anxiety disorder. And for me, that means my anxiety is peaking. I'm overwhelmed. I'm sad. I'm fearful. I'm worried. Worried for myself. Worried for my family. Worried for my life. I've got all these stresses that are in my mind. I'm stressed about money. I'm stressed about family, friends. I'm worried about keeping my mental health in check, even though right now it isn't. So I'm constantly got something going on in my mind and I cannot, for the life of me, get out of my brain. If you struggle with this, in lieu of Mental Health Awareness Month, I really would advise you to see somebody. It is important to just speak to somebody. See a therapist, speak to a friend, a partner, a family member. Because it happens on those days where you just feel like you cannot go on. It's the biggest struggle and you don't know what to do with it or with yourself. You're not alone. But just consider that you can do it. You can speak to somebody. There are so many helplines and there are so many organizations and NGOs that speak to mental health. Your mental health is just as important as your physical health, even more so sometimes. I actually think all the time. So when you are going through something, if you are going through something, consider that we've been through a lot. From 2019, end of 2019, to right now, we have been through all of it. You may have lost your job. You may have lost family members. You may have lost things that matter to you, people who matter to you. You may feel alone and afraid and anxious. Speak to somebody. For me, my religion is very, very important to me. Connecting, meditating, reading my Bible, speaking to God helps me a lot. And you may not be religious, and that's fine. But whatever it can, whatever you can do, and whatever it takes, do what you have to do. Just know that you're not alone, but take the time out for yourself. And remember that you can do this. You're not alone in it. I love how our generation puts so much importance on mental health. Because it is important. So speak to somebody. If you're going through it, if you want to speak to me, speak to me. But remember, you're not alone. You're not uh, alone. Maybe we should let the video start. Okay, let's do that.
Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, as you saw, breakfast. Breakfast is happening right now. It is quarter to one, and in 15 minutes I have to leave because I am going to sort out this situation. This is for the first time. Maybe you guys will be able to see what had happened here. Um, yeah, for the very first time in a very, very, very long time, I broke a nail. And I broke this nail, um, <laughs> I broke this nail wearing my jeans. I was out over the weekend. Uh, I will insert a clip from my Instagram. I was out over the weekend and we'd gone out for lunch. <clears throat> and I went to the bathroom, as ladies do. We go to the powder room to go sort out our snails and our lips and take a tinkle if we need to take a tinkle. You know how it is. Um, and I think I was pulling my jeans up and then I just heard a <laughs> literally like that. Uh, no pain or anything like that. It literally snapped. Um just after my nail line so it's really it's fine it's not it's not a biggie um i was actually due for a new set anyway so that's what i'm gonna go do i don't have any idea what i'm gonna go do to my nails today i'm actually even thinking of going shorter <laughs> who am i um anyway so today is uh tuesday Yesterday was a really bad day for me in terms of mental health. I really struggled a lot yesterday. I was going through it. The motions were having me yesterday. Um, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. I'm uh, really struggling with everything. I'm struggling with even reading. Gents, I can't read. I don't know what's going on. Well, it looks like I'm coming back to it now because um, I went... I. Uh, tried the song of achilles i stopped somewhere around 8 20 pages or something like that i was just like ah, I, I i i think i showed you guys this in my last vlog then i tried uh not all gomorras are the same <clears throat> which i also showed you in my last vlog and i was about 25 pages in where i realized that on each and every single page there is a reference to there's a zulu reference right I don't have a problem with this uh, stuff. If there's a Zulu reference or a Zulu word or whatever, I don't have a problem. All I would like is that what should come after that is an explanation, at least in English, of what it means. So that for people who don't understand Zulu, which I understand it, but I don't know about um, <clears throat> Zulu traditions, customs, cultural things, you know, that have specific names, or if it's a really complex, complicated Zulu word that I've never heard of, I need to at least, what, fo what should follow from that is something that I understand that, oh, okay, this is what this thing is. So, so there was none of that. And I realized that these words were coming, two or three words, per page and I'm just like okay yeah but I don't understand what this is this is not fair anyway so that kind of put me off reading that book as well so I stopped reading that one and then I didn't read for the rest of that week this morning I started ties that tether by somebody Igaro I'll, I'll show you the book a little bit later on when I come back I tried to ties the tether and I'm really into it. I tried it this morning and I'm about 80 pages in. So I read for about an hour and a half. So I'm about 80 pages in, which already tells me that we, we have a win. I'm going to enjoy this book. Let's go. Let's enjoy it. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about the storyline or the synopsis of the book later. Not feeling the best. Mental health was shite yesterday. Still pretty much not feeling the best as well today. But I know that I committed to Vlogtober, so I need to I need to do something about some. Okay. Um, so today, just to do something that's gonna make me feel a little bit better, I thought let me go get my nails done. And uh, also possibly, well not possibly, I need to pop into Woolies to get more of this spinach and all of the stuff that I typically buy weekly. Um, 
I'm also out of candles, which I need to go get. Uh, the pillar candles that I light up every night when I go to bed. I need to go get that stuff. And then maybe possibly sit. Actually, I do have the book down here. Hang on. Yes. Jane. I do have the book down here. So this is the book. This is Ties That Tether by Jane Agaro. So I'm reading this and I'm about 81 pages in. Really, really enjoyable so far. Um, I'll tell you the storyline. Really enjoyable. And the cover is just sick. Sickening colors you know if there's one thing i know about or oh, i've picked up or noticed about um um book covers by african authors they're very bright in color i feel like they really reflect the uh diversity culture um just just colorfulness of the african continent because even in our cultures all over Color is, is just, it's one of our things, you know? It's a big thing. Like, the Sutu culture is going to have a certain color. Go, or, or colors. Bedis, Zulus, vendors. Like, we, 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 we um, connect with, cult, with color in our cultures as well. Um, and I can see that reflected throughout the African continent. Color is our thing. And I'm also starting to see it reflected in a lot of um, African novels by african authors so it's it's really really nice to see especially this cover this cover is just gorgeous bro ah oh, she's such a sexy girl <laughs> her name is azere nigerian anyway i'll tell you about that a little bit later so i need to i am just really not having it uh yesterday was a really bad day i was supposed to start recording yesterday for my vlog for this particular vlog I couldn't, I just couldn't bring myself to do it. So because of that, I just decided to um, switch off. I didn't take any calls yesterday. I only took calls from two people yesterday. I didn't speak to anybody else. Um, I was barely on social media. I literally would scroll through every couple of hours, but I really wasn't really posting anything or anything like that. Um, it, it was just bad. It was just bad. And it's ironic because on Sunday I had the best day. I literally thought that I would wake up on Monday morning feeling great. I didn't. I woke up feeling really, really overwhelmed and just... Anyway. So, gonna go get my nails done. Not gonna take my camera with me, but I will vlog when I am out and about. Um, at the nail place and all of that. I, uh, I'll just use my phone. in the world <laughs> I just got back it is quarter to six I left the house at one so I'm a little bit tired I'm also potentially hangry but the nails are done order has been restored I just went for a simple what do they call this thing French fade French fade uh, yeah went for a simple French fade Feels great, order is restored, I can text faster now, and I'll definitely be able to type faster because I am going back to work full time next week. <laughs> anyway, uh, so, got my pods, I always have my pods in, don't judge me. Just got back from Woolies, I went into a couple of other shops where I was looking for other things and I couldn't find them, and I was just like, ah, I couldn't be bothered, I'm just going to go home. Um, so, because I'm hangry and because I'm not going to cook, I picked up the Woolies barbecue rotisserie chicken and the usual. There really isn't anything exciting in here except the normal things. So, yeah, really except the normal things. Tea, yogurt, and spinach. That's pretty much it. So that doesn't warrant a haul. It really doesn't. Um, I'm going to tidy this stuff up. I'm hangry. I really am hangry. Uh, I feel like just making a cup of coffee. 
and maybe a little piece of this chicken. It's already six o'clock, so yeah, I'm gonna cut up this chicken. Maybe make it with a bit of a salad. Do I want a salad? I already had a green juice, dude. Like, ugh, nah. Anyway, um, so the book I was telling you about, which I have left in the car because I thought that after I get my nails done, I was probably going to sit at Woolies and have lunch there. Never had the time for that. So uh, the book is called Ties That Tether by Jane Agaro. And it follows uh, the life of this young woman called Azere. A-Z-E-R-E. And she's a young woman who's making her way originally from Nigeria, but currently lives in uh, Canada and she's 25 and she's making her way in the corporate world. She's a director for a big advertising firm and all of that. But uh, given her background and where she's from, her mother is just on her case about finding a husband. She's 25, yeah, 25. So her mother's setting up these dates with all these different Nigerian men for her. And it's essentially a story that follows um, identity, culture, tradition, but also finding love. But love doesn't come in the form of what is expected from your uh, family. So she goes on a date one night, which is obviously set up by her mother with a Nigerian man, and it tanks completely. Uh, that night something happens and she meets a different blue-eyed, pretty white man and something happens with her and that man and uh, yeah, it puts into question a lot of things, uh, a lot of promises that she made to her father growing up and yeah, she starts to, she finds herself in a very confused and uh, complicated space. So far that's all I've read um makes it worse when this man ends up working this white man with the blue eyes ends up working at her workplace so that's where i'm at that's where i'm at right now really really interesting um the reason why i went to go get my nails done is one of the things that really helps lift my mood and help helps lift my spirits is actually doing my nails and doing all the girly girly things like brows and nails and waxes and toes and this and this and all of that it really makes me feel it lifts my mood a little bit and for sure no fail as always i do feel a lot better than i did this morning uh valerie is around town and uh yeah the cramps are absolutely wild i had them yesterday i still have them now <laughs> fun um, so I need to eat so I can drink some tablets and all of that. But for the most part, there's that on that sweet cheeks. Like, honestly, that's, that's, that's my story and that's the story I'm sticking to. Hey everybody, it's the next day. Um, let me explain something. During the week, I'm busy. I'm working, so it's really hard to film <laughs> Vlogtober and actually record during the week because there really isn't much to record. Like, there's nothing. I'm working, I'm sitting at a desk all day. Um, there's nothing to share. I'm not making my fancy breakfasts because I normally reserve that for over the weekend. I am like having a simple breakfast or I'm having a green smoothie or whatever. So there really isn't anything to share, which is, which kind of sucks because I would love to share uh, more with you, but that this is the reality of my life. A lot of the time during the week, I'm literally just working. <laughs> um, I do have a couple of things to add. Um, on the reading side, I am so glad I picked up this book. I'm so glad I picked up this book. I started reading this book yesterday and I am now 
somebody tell me this page on chapter 31 this page 221 and I started this book yesterday I read it in the morning a little bit and then I read it in the evening a little bit and then I also read it in the morning again today so I've been flying through this book I really love the social the social the social commentary that surrounds this book uh, regarding identity and, you know, um, black, white, um, being of uh, African descent and coming from an African family in this story, particularly from an African Nigerian uh, family. Uh, where this guy, with this girl, Azere, is, you know, struggling. I think if you watched yesterday's clips, you'll know pretty much the premise of the story. But she's struggling with, you know, making her family happy, making her mother happy, but also making herself happy and making um, decisions that, you know, are for her, her happiness and for her future. And those decisions conflict with what her family, well, in, more in particular, her mother wants for her and the promises that she made her father when she was younger, before her father died. So this is really, really great. Um, so I really needed something that was just going to be light, fluffy, uh, nothing too heavy. And this, excuse me, this did that for me. Um, I am on a little bit of a lunch break, if you will, right now. So I am thinking of picking it up and um, reading maybe a chapter or two. But uh, before I do that, I'm gonna show you how I make my iced coffee. Baby, it's so good. I did it for an Instagram reel of mine, which I'll put somewhere here so you can see. Um, but that's how I'm having my coffee now. And I'm avoiding having my iced coffee with full cream milk, cow's milk. I am having it more and more with oat milk or almond milk from butternut, which I think I shared in my previous vlog. It's really enjoyable. And when I have it with that milk, I can have it every day without having to feel bloated. You know, when you have too much uh, cow's milk, you feel bloated and you're like farting and everything. It's just not a look. It's not cute. Um, I don't feel heavy or whatever after I have that iced coffee. So I'm going to make myself one now read for a little bit and then probably get back to Alright, so typically I will use two Nespresso pods for this and today I'm using creme brulee because it is not intense at all. It's not an intensely strong cup of coffee. So we're going to go with this right now. Uh, my plant there. <laughs> Let's just move that out the way. So we're going to go with these two right now and typically put the glass in there. Open this up put the pot in there and then set it to the Nespresso side and not necessarily the Lungo side because we're trying to have a little bit of it go in there and then we're going to add a little bit more at the end. So... So that is the final product. Isn't that pretty? So I added the coffee that was in here and that's why the top part is a little bit darker but it's really pretty. The glass is from at home in case you're wondering. So, so pretty and delicious. Let's do a taste test, shall we? Because I haven't used the creme brulee one. So let's try. Here we are. Got my curved coffee straw. Let's add that in here. It's so good. Oh, it's so good. It's cold. It's refreshing. It's, uh, this milk is slightly, for a nut milk, is slightly a lot more creamier than all the other nut milks I've tried. 
nut milks? No, nut milk I've tried. And uh, it's really, really enjoyable. It still has the, the double shot of Nespresso makes it a lot better, a lot more concentrated, stronger, um, even though the intensity of the coffee itself isn't that strong. So this is not something that will keep me up in the evening or whatever, but it's really good as a refresher throughout the day because I already drink a lot of water, but sometimes I ain't trying to switch to cold drink or juice or whatever, but I want to keep going for the day, so I switch to coffee, which is really, really good.